I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I've got two HTC devices in my hand. The HTC One S, been out on T-Mobile for a while, but packing some killer specifications including a dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU and a brand new paint job with black and red as a result of the MicroArc oxidation on this new version. Then you've got the One VX on AT&T, a relative newcomer to the nation's second largest wireless carrier, but packing some pretty decent specifications as well and an even better price point. Which one's the best? We'll find out in the dogfight. Let's kick it off. One thing HTC promised not to do when they made the One X, the One S, and the One V, and they announced it in Mobile World Congress last year in Barcelona, they said, you know what, this is going to be our flagship line of devices. We're not going to make many more, you know, it's going to be a pretty thin line of devices because we want you to get that One X and be happy with it. Now, HTC, you could argue they've kind of gone away from that. You've seen the One X Plus, you've seen the One VX now, the One SV, all these different devices that are available now through different carriers and you're like, you know what, it's kind of diluted the one line of devices. So that's something to keep in mind, you know, they may or may not have done that, but what you do get here is two devices that are available on two different carriers. So you're getting kind of a mid-range device on AT&T with the One VX and then you have the One X Plus, whereas over here you've got the One S on T-Mobile. Unfortunately, you don't really have a higher end device with HTC right now on T-Mobile. But you know what? That aside, it's a dogfight between these two devices. This is the HTC One VX. It's available now at AT&T for $49. So price point is fantastic on this device. And really when you look at it, the specifications you get are great as well. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 processor. So think kind of like Droid Incredible 4G LTE on Verizon, at least a little bit here. One gigabyte of internal memory. It's got a 4.5 inch LCD display, 540 by 960 pixels. So QHD here. 5 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording. Now here's where it kind of fools you a little bit. It looks like it's a removable battery door, but when you go to take it off, if I can actually get it off, you don't get a removable battery. All you get is a removable area for the micro SIM card and the micro SD card slot. What it does have is a 1,810 milliamp hour non-removable battery. So a little bit bigger than the One S and right there on par with the original One X. Now the One X Plus which is also available on AT&T, bumps it up to 2,100 milliamp hours. But you know what, for this, with the screen size, with the processor that it is, I think 1,810 is more than enough. That said, you know, people love to see bigger batteries and people love to see removable batteries at that. And unfortunately, neither one of these devices have that. Running Android 4.0 as well with HTC Sense version 4.1. Not the latest version of Sense, 4 Plus, but running 4.1. And we'll talk about those differences in just a bit. This is the One S on AT, or excuse me, on T-Mobile, and it's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU. So clock speed here a little bit faster. It's got a smaller screen though, a 4.3 inch OLED display, 540 by 960 pixels here. So OLED display again, QHD as well. Eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording and it's got a kind of a nice color scheme here as well. This has been out on T-Mobile obviously since the release or right around the release of the original device at Mobile World Congress. It came out on T-Mobile just a little bit later but this is a newer version with a new color scheme. It's based on what's called a micro arc oxidation theme which as you can see here different color scheme black and red and supposedly uh, less prone to scratches, less prone to scuffs and things like that. Just a different paint job basically when you really boil down to it but it still looks great. Love the black and it's nice refresh to kind of the silver and blue and different color schemes we've seen over the months. This also has Android 4.0 with HTC Sense version 4.1. Now in terms of overall look and feel here, you can see they're kind of similar across the board. The One S has a micro USB charging port on the left side. Both have their volume rockers on the right side. Then the One VX has a charging port at the bottom. But up top you get, even with the voice crack, up top you get 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks and power buttons. Now, camera's better on One S. So I think for a lot of people, if you're you know carrier agnostic, you don't really care whether you're going to go with AT&T or T-Mobile. I think really you got to pick what's most important to you because the clock speed's faster over here, but the camera's a little bit better on the One S. Little things like that. Now, they both do have the image sense chip on the camera on the back, so you do get those nice camera abilities that we've seen in reviews and dogfights, stuff that I've covered before. But you know what? We're going to jump right in to a couple different things and take a look since they're both running Android 4.0. Let's see what comes out of the box from the respective carriers. Over on the One VX, you get the typical AT&T stuff. No real surprises here. Code scanner, family map, locker, navigator ready to go, device help, all that stuff you know and love. Google Plus integration, all the Gmail integration stuff, Google Talk, little things. If you're moving from Android 2.3 to 4.0, it's nice to have multiple Gtalk accounts. Huge benefit there. And then you get Wi-Fi hotspot stuff 
uh, as well. 1,650 milliamp hour battery over here. Smaller screen, but a faster clock speed on the CPU. I should point that out as well. You also get 411 and more access. T-Mobile on this one. Game base. Hey, Wi-Fi network's available. And then more for me, mobile hotspot. What else do you get? Google Plus integration. T-Mobile name ID. T-Mobile TV. Visual voicemail. Where's my water? So you get a little game as well. So you can play a game if that's something that interests you. And of course, tune in is over on both of these devices. So that's there as well. Now, typical sense, look, and feel here. And if you haven't really worked with it since Mobile World Congress, take a look. There are some minor improvements to Sense 4 Plus, which is what we see on the Droid DNA and on the One X Plus. But you can see a couple of benefits here. I like the fact that you can scroll between your frequent applications and your downloads on both of these devices. And the overall button placement at the bottom is pretty similar as well. Back, home, and then recent applications. Although now, you can do recent apps on both by touching and holding or you can go into settings, and this is something I like. We'll go to display gestures and buttons. If you want, recent applications button, you can press it for menu, press and hold for recent applications. So let's say, for example, you're in Gmail, you're taking a look at your emails. We'll sync these up, and it is freaking out. Let's go into something else. Let's say you're in, uh, let's find something else. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see, internet. And you know what? You press recent applications or the recent apps button, you can press it and make it a menu button as well. So on that note, you know what, we'll go ahead and jump in to the browser and take a look at both of these devices. We'll load up phonedog.com. Now again, you get more screen real estate on the One VX side, and I should point out the One S, at least online with T-Mobile, is 50 bucks as well. So the price point's pretty similar with both of these devices. It's really gonna depend on what's most important to you. Phonedog.com, we'll load up both of these. Overall, both of these devices are relatively fast. I don't really notice a speed difference between the 1.2 gigahertz CPU here and the 1.5 gigahertz CPU over on this side. Really don't see it in day-to-day -day performance. I'm sure Quadrant Standard will tell a different story. But you can see here, very responsive all around with little to no lag right there. Portrait landscape transitions are nice. Pinch to zoom, responsive as you would expect. And you can see tabs up here at the top, where I can open up new tabs if I want to. Scroll back and forth tabs like that. So pretty quick and easy. The animations are nice. The only thing I don't like about Sense 4.1 is I feel that it's still a little bit too bloaty. I mean, just the way the animations work when you move back and forth. I appreciate a good animation from time to time, but I can still kind of see that loading bar every now and again, or kind of the virtual color wheel like you see on your Mac or uh, perhaps the hourglass icon like you see on your Windows device. Little things like that, or little, I should say circle now, it's not an hourglass icon anymore, but circular, uh, circular weight thing. We're just gonna call it that, circular weight thing. And you can see, you know, there's a little bit of a lag from time to time. Most of that, though, is a result of the fact that Sense is still much better than what it was in Sense 3 and 3.5, but still kind of bloaty in comparison to TouchWiz, in comparison to Motorola's pretty scaled back UI even in some cases in comparison to LG's UI, but I do like some of the benefits you get with this. So as always, it's a trade-off. You can see the notification area. I wanna show you some of the personalization features on these devices as well. Now it's mostly similar across the board here. You've got dedicated personalized menus where you can go in and we can say, you know what, we've got a scene, we've got a skin, wallpapers and more. Skins are some of my favorite and you can get more through the One S, though I believe they've shut that store down or in the process of shutting that store down via HTC Hub, but you do get a couple different options. You get matte, you get serene, you get HTC aluminum, and kind of the same thing over here. So if you're tired of looking at the same look and feel, you can go to serene, for example. You can go to matte over on this one and apply both of those, and you'll see that the background wallpaper will change. Some of the color themes will change and more. So we can load those up. And I'll turn them off and on so you can see the lock screens as well. You do get a plethora of different lock screens. This is the typical look and feel for an HTC lock screen with the ring down at the bottom. You can either bring applications into the ring or you can swipe it up and easily access the home screen. You do get a couple of different options there as well. We'll go back into settings and take a look at personalize. And you can see lock screen style. Click on those and you can scroll back and forth between stuff like productivity, which happens to be one of my favorites. And when I go out and back in, my productivity lock screen is there, although since this isn't Sense 4 Plus, you don't get the weather access right there on the gate like you do with Sense 4 Plus on the Droid DNA and on the One X Plus. One thing I do like as well, let me jump right back, and I know I'm jumping through a lot of these personalization choices, but I wanted to point out one thing that you do see in 4 Plus. So if you've worked with the One X, you're moving to this, or maybe a Droid DNA and you're moving to this, I miss the ability to personalize the text messages. You get font size, and that's about it in terms of abilities to personalize. And since 4 Plus, you can change the background look and feel, you can change the text size, and more. So you've got some level of personalization with the text bubbles and things like that on both of, uh, or excuse me, on the Droid DNA and on the One X that you don't get with this. Not a big deal if you're not coming from those devices, but if you've worked with that, 
it is something you lose on Sense 4.1. Just minor things between the Sense versions, but you know what, if you're using a Galaxy Note 2 or Galaxy S3 and you're used to that customization that you experience with it where you, know, you can change the color bubbles, you can change the background, you might be frustrated with both of these devices. Stay tuned for part two, speed tests, cameras, and more coming right up. And special thanks to Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working with either one of these devices. They'll help, make you, uh, they'll help you rather make sure you're good to go and set up and everything's ready. Font size is perfect at Best Buy Mobile. Stay tuned for part two. We'll cover it all and more in the next video.